Cavalcade of America, starring Robert Young, Wanda Hendricks, and Lon McAllister. Sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight, our DuPont Cavalcade comes to you from the stage of the Memorial Auditorium in Louisville, Kentucky, where we are the guests of the men and women of the DuPont Company's Neoprene Works in Louisville. And here is Robert Young. Thank you and good evening. Wanda Hendricks, Lon McAllister, and I are happy to be in Louisville for this cavalcade broadcast. It's good to be hearing Stephen Foster's My Old Kentucky Home. For well, this is homecoming year in the Bluegrass State. Tonight, our thoughts turn to those pioneers and builders who have given us a Kentucky of beauty and memory. We recall Daniel Boone, who founded early settlements here, and Henry Clay of Lexington. Here was born Jefferson Davis, and in a humble cabin, Abraham Lincoln. But we might not have known their Kentucky, nor indeed our own, had it not been for the man whose story we tell you tonight, George Rogers Clark. <laughs> With Robert Young as George Rogers Clark, Wanda Hendricks as Polly Ann, and Lon McAllister as Tom McChesney, our DuPont play, The Sword of Kentucky, begins with a very old letter, dated September 20th, 1779, and written by Polly Ann McChesney to her brother in Virginia. Dear brother, Ben put her down in Carolina two years ago. I was so lonely. Now, here in Louisville, with Colonel Clark's new town a building all around us, it's hard to imagine that dire loneliness. But I do remember. The log cabin in the shadow of the Blue Ridge where I lived and sometimes taught school. And Tom, my betrothed, away fighting the Cherokees. I don't know what I'd have done had it not been for little Daisy, the orphan boy father had taken in. One day in the early spring, Daisy was cleaning Father's rifle at the cabin door. Hi, Sonny. Hi. Hey, that's a uh, mighty long piece of gun for such a short piece of boy. I shot a deer last week. Ah, is that so now? Say, this used to be the school mom's house, didn't it? Ah, uh, it still is. Oh, but you're new around here. What's your name, son? David Ritchie. Howdy, Dave. Howdy, stranger. Uh, is Miss Polly Ann home? No, she's gone down to the O'Hara's. Tell me, has she been happy? She used to be, but her pa died. And because of Tom McChesney, him she's promised to marry. He's been away, and in the village they say he's run off with a Kentucky gal from over the mountain. Oh, they say that, do they? Well, you tell you her... You tell her, stranger. Here she comes. Polly! Tom, oh, Tom, you come back. Oh, Polly. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Why did you come back? Well, to marry you, of course. You haven't forgotten. And what about that Kentucky girl? Oh, you don't believe that. Oh, look here, Polly. I- I'm no boaster, but oh, when I think what I came through to get back here to you, I, I wonder I ever came back at all. I- I've walked 200 miles, fed seven times, and my scalp is near hanging on a Cherokee's belt as, as that. Here I am, and we're going to be married tomorrow. Um, where are we? <laughs> of course we are, Tom. Whoever said we weren't. <laughs> Dear brother, we were married. Tom in new fringe buckskin, me in a white linen gown I'd made myself, and lovely blue beaded moccasins. I remember the gaunt Baptist preacher, the fiddler's tune, the dancing that lasted all night, the huge maple under which we stood. But most of all, I remember Tom McChesney, my Tom. Then, a few weeks later... Polly, uh, there, there's something I've got to tell you, something I, I should have told you before... Tom, if it's about that Kentucky woman, you can save your breath. Who cares about her now? There weren't no Kentucky woman. It's about a man, a man I met at Harrods. He's a great man, Polly. His name is Colonel Clark. And he has a great plan afoot to lick the Indians and the British out in the western country. He's gathering an army at the falls of the Ohio in Kentucky. And, well... Go on, Tom. Well, I promised him I'd join up at the falls. They'll be needing hunters. And... Well, I, I gave him my word. If you gave him your word, you'll go. 
Oh, Polly, I knew you'd understand. You'll go, and I'll go with you. And so will Daisy. But you can't go, Polly. It's too dangerous. Well, we'll have to go all the way to the falls of the Ohio River, over Boone's Trace, what they call the Wilderness Trail. Well, there's Indians all up through that country, and the British are paying them for scalps, and all the Kentucky settlers are holed up in forts. Uh, no, I, I couldn't let you and little Dave run such a risk. Listen to me, Tom. We three are one family now. We'll stick together. <laughs> So we set off in early April for Kentucky. Up the trail first blazed by Daniel Boone, the path across the great Blue Ridge. For weeks there was no sign of Indians. We were lucky, Tom kept saying. And then one day, just as we were almost within sight of our goal, Corn Island, our luck changed. We were crossing a clearing. Tom was leading the pack horse, and Davy and I were on Prince, the pony. When from a clump of bushes just ahead. Polly! Indians! Get down! Quick, Davy! They got my horse. Now pull that other one down here. Down, Prince! Down, you! Now, come here. Crouch back here with me, behind the horses. Now, those Indians are right up ahead in those bushes. Not a bad shot. Read stay to that other gun, Polly. Good. Now get that gun barrel ready to slide up over Prince's saddle, boy. And if you see one of them, shoot. I will. Hope we can get out of this. I can see one of them. He's standing up. Oh, Daisy, you hit him. Where can I... Where can I... kill him. Look, Tom. Behind us on the nose. More Indians. I'm afraid that... He's surrounded. Down, Daisy. And stay down, you hear me? We just gotta wait him out. Maybe it'll dart. But if they charge us, we're outnumbered. Tom, if we don't get out of here... Listen. Yeah. I hear something, too. The horses. You hear them? Somebody's coming. Oh, Tom, more Indians. No, no, look. Look, the Indians are running away. No, but don't move it. It, it may be a trick. Hello there. Hello. I know that voice. That, that, that's Colonel Clark. Tom McChesney. Colonel. Sai, we've got company. Dismount, man. Well, howdy, Tom. You know Sai Canton here? Sure thing. Howdy, Simon. Howdy. Looks like we got here just in time. Back at Corn Island, we had news of an Indian scouting party. So we rode out to have a look. Didn't have an engine trouble? A mite, just a mite. I will say, though, we uh, had more than we could handle. Thanks, Colonel, for taking that look. Oh, uh, Colonel Clark, Sid, uh, this is my wife, Polly Ann, and our ward, David Ritchie. Howdy. 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 How do you do, ma'am? Well, Tom, you're just in time. We'll be starting down river next week, if all goes well. You've got an army, sir? My uh, army, such as it is, rests on Corn Island above the falls. One hundred and fifty-three men. All I could beg, borrow, bribe, or steal in Virginia and the mountain settlements. We'll need you, Tom. I said I'd make it, Colonel. My compliments on keeping your word. And on your charming wife. My felicitations, ma'am. Thank you. Well, now, it's hardly an hour to the river. Davy, would you like to ride with me? Yes, sir. All right, then, up we go. And so, dear brother, I first met George Rogers Clark. He was tall and had wonderful, courtly Virginia manners. He and Davy rode ahead, and we came to a rise overlooking a lovely valley... There you are, Davy. Look. The great river. The Ohio? The Ohio. In the finest country, the most beautiful land God ever made. New, untouched, unspoiled, glorious. See the falls, boy, and the island above it? Yes, sir. That corn island land, the settlement. Someday there'll be a great city there at the falls. It's in the stars. There'll be farms and towns and cities all up and down that river and beyond up to the lakes. The western lands, the golden western lands. British and Indian country now, everything between the Ohio River and the North Pole. But I mean to make it ours, lad, for ourselves and those who come after us. I'd sure like to help you, sir. Well, now, uh... <laughs> I don't quite see how, uh... Hold on a minute. Can you play a drum, Davy? No, sir, but I can learn. Do you have a drum, sir? That we have. A big British drum with the royal arms all over it. Stolen it was, like much of our gear. It's yours, Davy. 
We'll go down the river on this expedition in style, to the tune of the king's own drum, and you'll be our drummer boy. Davy, call the men to attention. That'll be enough. Man? Men? In an hour, we launch the flatboats and be off down the Ohio about our business. The nature of that business I have had to conceal from you for reasons of secrecy. I'll tell you now what we're going to do. My friends and neighbors, there's scarce a man among you who has not suffered at the hands of the savages. Many of you have seen wives and children slaughtered before your eyes or dragged off into captivity. West of the mountains, no man's home is safe against the red hirelings of the British Colonel Henry Hamilton at Fort Detroit. You were told that this force was being raised to defend the Kentucky settlement. So it was. But to my mind, the best defense is a strong attack. And I have so convinced Governor Patrick Henry of Virginia. I am authorized to lead this expedition right to Hamilton's doorstep at Detroit. First, however, we must cut off the enemy's southern supply depots at Kaskaskia and Vincennes. Few as we are, we can, with the help of God, win a new empire to the American cause, the Northwest Territory. All the land from the Alleghenies to the Mississippi, from the Great Lakes to Kentucky. That's all, men. We leave in an hour. Well, Tom, it's goodbye then. I'm afraid it is, Polly. But I'll come back. I, I promise you I'll come back. Tell me how I know you will. Polly, why is it you haven't been fussing to come along? This time my job's to stay behind. <laughs> as long as I live, I'll never understand a woman's ways. I think you'll understand when you come back. Hey, McChesney, come along now. The canoe's ready. Oh, Tom. Um, <laughs> Goodbye, Polly. Goodbye. God go with you. You are listening to Robert Young as George Rogers Clark, Wanda Hendricks as Polly Ann, and Lon McAllister as Tom McChesney. On the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Our DuPont story continues with an old faded letter written by Polly Ann. Polly was writing to her brother in Virginia. Polly's husband, Tom, is a lieutenant in the army of George Rogers Clark. As you may well have guessed, dear brother, after Tom left with Colonel Clark, I had good reason to stay behind with the women and the settlers on Corn Island. What happened on that expedition was told to me later by Colonel Clark himself, after it was over, during many a long, starlit evening here in Louisville. At first, Polly, all went well. Kaskia was taken by surprise, and our diplomacy soon quieted the fears of its French settlers. Thanks to a frontier priest, Father Pierre Gibault, other French settlers over near Vincennes also accepted the authority of Virginia in the Congress. One day in my headquarters at Kaskia. Come in. Uh, Colonel Clark, sir, that traitor, Mr. V, goes back. I met him at the stockade. He's outside now. Ask him to come in at once, Tom. Yes, sir. Uh, in here, Mr. Vigo. Ah, uh, Colonel Clark. Well, Vigo, how's trade upriver? Well, the trade, it is good, but the news, it is bad. Oh? It's true, then. We, oui. Hamilton has marched in and occupied Vincent. Now, Colonel Clark, your position here at Kaskaskia is threatened. Your whole expedition imperiled. You saw Hamilton? 
Me? I drink with him. I talk with him. <laughs> How uh, large is his force? He has 90 British regulars and 500 Indians. Ah, Ego, what I wouldn't give for 500 men and a few pounds sterling. We've no cannon and no money to buy swivel guns at St. Louis. We've got 20 flags stitched together for us by the women here. Enough flags for a 1,000 troops. But the 170-odd men I command have little powder and less lead. Still, we'll go after Hamilton. Wait, wait. You have not heard the worst news. Between here and Vincennes is one great lake. The Wabash has overflowed all this country between. The floods, icy waters come early and very bad. And it is winter, my friend. Well, we're going to take Vincennes, Vigo, floods or no floods. And if necessary, we'll swim there. So we began the march. A hungry, lean, icy march through Wabash floods in January 1779. In the first days, provisions lasted. Long before the march was over, my officers' horses were killed for food. Mile by freezing mile, sometimes inch by inch in the tangled underbrush of flooded forests. Day by day, hour by hour, we pushed ahead. On the 18th day, having slept in our soaked and icy buckskins on a swampy knoll, we were awakened by a new sound. You hear that, Colonel? Yes. Hamilton's sunrise gun been sends. Si, take a look over the hillock yonder. See if the water up ahead is frozen. Yes, sir. Tom? Yes, sir. Here, sir. How's the Richie boy? Oh, he seems all right, sir. At least why he never complains. He's our luck. And no troops ever stood in greater need of good fortune. You'll carry him on your shoulders again today, Tom. Yes, sir. Uh, here's the lad now. Good. Son? Yes, sir? How about a little noise by way of reveille? Man, your attention, please. We're one day's march away from Vincennes. 24 hours from food and fire and dry britches once more. Have you got one more day left in you? Ahead of us lies the Horseshoe Plain. Or maybe I should call it Horseshoe Lake. Ahead of that lies Vincennes and Colonel Hamilton, the scout merchant. The French hunters we picked up yesterday have told me that no word of our coming has reached the fort of Vincennes. Most of Hamilton's Indians are off to the south on a raid. Ahead of us, men... Lies victory. Oh, Colonel Park. Yes, Captain. How's the water up ahead? Throw solid, an inch thick over the whole plain. Too thin to hold up, too thick for an ice warm swim. And about chest deep, I'd say. We'll break the ice and wade through it. I'll lead the way. Baby? Yes, sir? Up on Tom's back. Up. Now, forward to Vincennes. March. in the communication from Colonel Clark. Where did you get this, Major? A French trapper brought it to Vincennes. Clark's army is at our very gates. What? A surprise move, sir. He marched out of Kaskaskia across the Illinois country. Here, you'd better read this letter. Yes. What damnable insolence. What colossal, unmitigated effrontery. This, this backwoods Caesar demands that we surrender Vincennes without firing a shot. Listen, listen to this. Sir... In order to save yourself from the impending storm that threatens you, I order. Order, he says. I order you to immediately surrender yourself up with all your garrison stores, etc. For if I'm obliged to storm, you may depend upon such treatment justly due to a murderer. The man's mad, sir. Oh, beware. Beware, he says, of destroying stores of any kind or papers or letters that are in your possession or hurting one house in the town for by heavens. If you do, there shall be no mercy shown you. Why, that, that bond trotter, it's preposterous. Perhaps, sir, but after all, the trapper counted 20 flags. Clark must have a thousand men at least. Nonsense. Lieutenant Osborne, take down my reply. Right. 
Governor Hamilton begs to acquaint Colonel Clark that he and his garrison are not disposed to be awed into any action unworthy of British subjects. By nightfall, the outcome was clear, and at dusk before the old French church at Vincennes, Hamilton surrendered. All right, men. Attention. Colonel Clark, His Excellency Governor Hamilton. Colonel Clark, you have forced me to capitulate. I and my garrison are your prisoners. You will be treated according to the honors of war. You good settlers of Vincennes, I bring you American freedom. To my own men, I want to express not only my deep gratitude, but also the appreciation of the Commonwealth of Virginia and the Continental Congress. Our task is finished. Sergeant Cowan, you may raise the flag over Vincennes. And Davy, as the flag goes up, I want you to beat that drum as you've never beat it before. From now on, it will fly over all this territory as a symbol of liberty and hope. Very well, Sergeant. Raise the colors. Private Ritchie. Yes, Colonel Clark? How would you like to go back to Corn Island? Is Tom going, sir? I'll need Tom a bit longer. We've got these Britishers to feed for a while as well as ourselves. And I'm sending Simon Kenton back to the falls of the Ohio with dispatches. You're to go with him. Aww. It's an order, Private Ritchie. Yes, sir. Tom will be free to go back soon, I promise you. Uh, well? There's, there's one thing, sir. What is that? Please, Colonel Clark, may I take my drum? And so, dear brother, I heard from Colonel Clark himself the story of his expedition to conquer the Northwest Territory. And I had something to tell him, too, of what Tom found that day he got back. Davy was polishing his drum outside the door of our cabin as Tom came up the trail. Miss Polly, look! Oh, Tom, Tom, it's you! Polly, Polly, darling. Oh, I'm so glad you're home, Tom. Come over here, under the window. Look here. Polly, darling. He's a boy. Uh, have you had him christened yet? No, Tom, I was waiting for you. Oh, I, I, I've a, a name for him, Polly. I've, I've a great name for him. So have I. George? Roger! Clark! My chutney! <laughs> Yes, that was what I told Colonel Clark. We named our baby for him. You see, I feel very close to Colonel Clark. Each of us, in our own way, gave something to this country we love and to its future. May it be a bright one for all of us, for ourselves and our children. Think of us occasionally, dear brother. Think well of us, as we do of you. Your affectionate sister... Polly Ann McChesney, at Louisville, the new settlement on the Ohio, in Kentucky. thanks to Robert Young, to Wanda Hendricks, and to Lon McAllister and our cavalcade cast for tonight's DuPont story, The Sword of Kentucky. Next week, Cavalcade returns to New York and presents the distinguished star of stage and screen, Basil Rathbone 
Our DuPont story tells of a strange visit to Monticello, the home of Thomas Jefferson. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Sword of Kentucky, was written by George Faulkner and was suggested by a passage in the book The Crossing by the American novelist Winston Churchill. Robert Young, star of Father Knows Best, appeared through the courtesy of Maxwell House Coffee. Wanda Hendricks can soon be seen in The Admiral with a Lady. Lon McAllister's latest picture is The Boy from Indiana. Our cavalcade supporting players were Clifford Tatum Jr. as Davy, Dan Arco as Vigo, Horace Brayham as Hamilton, and George Petrie as Hay. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. This is Ryan Halloran speaking. The program was directed by John Zoller. Cavalcade of America is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Makers of better things for better living through chemistry. This is America's number one advertising medium, NBC. Mm.